Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We are glad that you are here to worship with us, and hopefully you're here to eat and dance as well. Today after worship is our Danish Christmas brunch, so we invite you to stay and eat. There's plenty of food and plenty of fun to be had by all, so we hope you can stay and join us. This coming week, um, on the 19th, so next Sunday, um, in the morning, the choir is going to be with us and has multiple special music numbers they would like to share. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to have quiet Christmas. So if you, kn- you are grieving the loss of people this Christmas season or just need a place to come and breathe and be, we invite you to join us at 4 o'clock um, next Sunday. Also next Sunday after worship is Mythbusters. A uh, chance to come and laugh and have Christmas trivia over what do we really know about the Christmas story and not. So everyone is invited to join us there at Coffee Fellowship. I invite you to stand and join us in the call to worship. Friends, we gather this day to celebrate joy. The joy we have been given by God. The joyful life we share with one another in community. The joyful life that Jesus gives in abundance. Let us be grateful for the joy of life. And let us worship God together. Gathered together to worship our God whose Son is coming soon. Let us confess our sins together. God for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear the good news. Our loving God who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Advent is a time of waiting. We wait in hope. We wait in peace. As we wait, we are filled with joy, not because our lives are perfect, Not because we don't have any struggles, but because we find our strength in God, the God of our salvation. We are joyful because God sent God's Son, Jesus Christ, into this world so we may be saved. Today we light the candle of joy. As we wait, let us be people of joy. Our gathering song is hymn number 251, and I forgot to say, Ray's are filling in while Noah has a flat tire and is working his way here. So thank you to Ray's today on PowerPoint.
May the one who was and who is and who is to come be with you in grace and peace. Let us together pray. God of strength and joy, whoops. <laughs> God of peace, we seek you. We seek you in the crude manger, a child born to save the world. May your peace be a comfort to all who long for justice. And may your peace fill our hearts and grace our lips so that we might reflect your love for all the world. In your name we pray, amen. Please be seated for the reading. Our first reading for this morning comes from the book of Isaiah the 11th chapter. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I say, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good hidings, tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, Herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear, says the Lord God. Says, say to the, do not fear, say to the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with, his, with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Our psalm for today comes from Psalm 46. Let us read our psalm responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. 
He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our second reading this morning comes from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying of, of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saves us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle, and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Word of life, word, God, word of God, word of life. I hope you've had a great week. Mm -hmm. I was looking under my Christmas tree and look what I found. I love presents. Mm -hmm. Do you love presents too? Are there gifts under the tree at your house yet? Have you counted to see how many presents you have? I like to count my presents and shake my presents mm -hmm, and try and figure out what they are. But my mom and dad said don't do that. Mm -hmm. So there's a story about a young boy who liked to look at his presents every day. Mm -hmm. And he would count them, one, two, three, four, five, and he would shake them and he'd move them around to make his pile look bigger. Mm -hmm. But one day, he was counting presents, one, two, three, four, five, and then he counted his sisters, one, two, three, four, five, six, and she had more. And he was so, so, so mad that he went running to his mom's, mm -hmm. and he said, Katie has more presents under the tree than I do. And you know what his mom said? His mom said, that Christmas isn't about getting presents under the tree. Mm -mm. Christmas is about the best present of all. And that present is Jesus. Have you ever felt like that little boy did? Have you been jealous of someone else's presents? Did being jealous make you happy or sad? 
Christmas should be a time of joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. Today in church, we are learning that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So even if we're having a bad day, when we feel sad or upset, we can still have joy because we know that Jesus came for you and 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 me too. The best joy of Christmas comes, I think, not from getting presents, but from giving presents. Mm-hmm. By sharing what we have so more people can be happy too. I think that's so fun. So sometimes if I get a new toy, I go pick out another toy that I would can share that I don't use very much anymore. Or if I my shoes get too small, then I share them and I get shoes that fit me better. What is one thing that you could share this Advent or Christmas? Maybe you can share your toys or your clothes, or maybe you have extra food to share with people that are hungry. It's so fun to share and give to others at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I love sharing. Will you pray with me today? Let's pray. Dear God, help us to remember that Jesus is the best gift of all. Mm -hmm. Help us to share with others during Christmas and the whole year through. We love you, God. Amen. Have a good week, friends. Bye. Pew. invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus says, I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and am going to the Father. His disciples said, yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today our sermon series continues of what are you waiting for, talking about waiting for strength. And like Sprout says, there's the Bible verse that says the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So we're going to talk about joy and comfort and strength, starting with comfort, because for God, strength and comfort go hand in hand. So if I were to ask you this morning, what brings you comfort, how would you answer? Maybe comfort for you is found in your favorite pair of jeans and a hoodie, right? Maybe comfort is found in spending time with family or having coffee with a close friend. Maybe comfort for you is found in the unconditional love of a pet or in a simple text from your children saying, hey mom, I'm okay. Maybe it's found in doing what you love whether it's curling up with a good book on a cold day or getting out in nature or doing whatever hobby it is that brings you joy. Maybe it's gathering in a sanctuary like this one, being still 
and letting the word of God speak? What is it that brings you comfort? Our first reading for this morning talks about comfort as well. But to understand what comfort is being talked about here, we need to understand what's going on in the world when Isaiah was written. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah were written by the prophet Isaiah to the people of Israel as they were being assaulted by neighbors on every side. Okay? Chaos all around them. And rather than depend on God, the Israelites turned to just about everything else. Do you know any group of people that does that in the world today? Right? Isaiah kept calling them to turn back to God, reminding them that God was there for them over and over again, reminding them that their hope could be found if they would just trust in God. But chapter 40, where we read today, it starts a section of Isaiah that scholars believe was actually added 150 years later. Generations later. Right? It was written when the Israelites were returning from exile. Still in chaos. Still needing to be reminded to turn back to God to get the comfort and the strength that they require. The comfort that the prophet is asking God to give in Isaiah 40 is not just that encouraging pat on your back from your mom or your dad, right? But the comfort talked about in our first readings is the comfort that would give them the strength they need to keep going, to move forward. The God of the Old Testament is one who's known for his might and his strength. The God of the Old Testament was one that was feared as much as he was respected. But here the Israelites and we are reminded that God's strength is also often wrapped up in gentleness. God can use his strength to give us comfort. Sometimes we don't just need that God that's all powerful and on the warpath of destruction, but a God who can show his might through his gentleness as much as his power. God comes to us as a shepherd, the good shepherd, loving us and turning us in the right direction. God loves and cares for us and blesses us with good things, even though we don't deserve it. God is in the business of comforting his people throughout our scriptures. If we keep reading in Isaiah 40, we read verse 28, which says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. We are able to draw strength and comfort from God because his strength never ends. Our God who made all of us, who made creation, he doesn't need to stop. Raise your hand if you think you don't need to stop sometimes. And then what happens? We crash and burn, right? Because we keep going and going and going and going and going and we think we'll be fine and then, yeah, no. Our bodies need to stop sometimes. Our bodies need to rest and renew, as does all of creation. It's one of the reasons we have seasons, right? Winter comes, and what do animals do? They hibernate. They rest, right? They store up enough energy, and they just let God take care of them. We can learn from creation in that. We, this time of year, are running 24 directions all the time, right? Even as I'm sitting here talking to you, I can watch some of your eyeballs and the list going through your head. Okay, after Danish brunch, I need to go to the grocery store to pick up these four things because I forgot because i got to make cookies for this, right? Sometimes our strength, dear ones, comes from rest. Sometimes our strength comes from finding joy and taking time when we think we don't have time and doing something as crazy is dancing around a Christmas tree and holding on to those traditions and reminding ourselves that our joy, our strength, our hope comes from the God who lets us do all those things, who gifts us the gift of rest and joy and hope and love. 
So this Advent season, I don't know what you're going through just like you don't know what I'm going through, right? But we do know this. We do know that we can find comfort and hope and joy if we put our focus in God. If we spend time reading his word, if we spend time gathering together, if we spend time just being church. Let's pray together today. Gracious God, we thank you that the joy of you is where we find our strength. Even in the hard days, Lord, even when we're grieving and hurting, we can have joy. We can have strength from you. Gracious God, we thank you for a chance to gather today. We thank you for a chance to be church together. Bless this time, Lord. Give us rest and renewal. In your heavenly name we pray. Please rise as you are able, as we profess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, thank you for the comfort that you bring each one of us. Be with us in this waiting time as we wait for you to come once more. Help us to see you at work in the world around us and teach us how to share your comfort with others. Hear us, O God. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us, that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Help us to see your beauty in the world around us. Be with those who are recovering from natural disasters, especially those who lost their homes, churches, and loved ones in Kentucky. Hear us, O God. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms, that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill. We especially lift up to you, Steve, Ruth, Cindy, Antoine, Ethan, Scott, Eldora, Anella, Janine, Norma, Linda, and the family of Irene Kuhlman. Heal them and comfort them, Lord, as only you can. Hear us, O God. Your mercy. Rejoicing God, you exult over us in singing. Enliven the songs of this assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians, especially Hudson and Leah. With instruments and dance, Join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God. God of yesterday, today, and forever, we thank you for the traditions that we share. Be with us as we eat brunch today and celebrate the Danish heritage of Bethlehem. Show us ways that we can share from our experiences that this may be a congregation that welcomes and loves all people and all backgrounds. Hear us, O God. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, our coming Savior. At this time, we invite you to be seated as we listen to this offering of praise, and we invite any children in our midst to participate the holy cow from which the money goes towards world hunger to help ensure all children of the world are fed.
invite you to stand in body or spirit. Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, it is our delight and our devotion to give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to all the world. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Just a reminder that we'll receive communion this morning at the direction of our ushers. We invite you to come forward and receive the bread and juice. You can take it while back in your pews. The reminder, there's a clear... Layer you peel off to access the wafer, and then the thicker layer to get the juice. There's a white bucket somewhere in your pew. We can pass back and forth and put the cups in there. All are welcome at Christ's table.
I invite you to stand for the blessing. <clears throat> body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 439. As you wait for Christ's return, live as people of hope and go with God's blessing. May hope in Christ's return sustain you. God's peace saturate the world around you and the joy of the Holy Spirit strengthen you and the love of the triune God encircle you in this moment and in all the moments to come. Amen.